thanks for staying with us. The United Nations Development Program is the largest agency with a mandate to eradicate poverty mm -hmm. and has been in Nigeria since the country became independent, providing capacity building and policy de development support to the federal government. On the show today, we have the resident representative in Nigeria to talk about the UNDP's 2020 outlook for working with creatives in Nigeria to further its development agenda. Hmm. Welcome with us, Mohamed Yahaya. Thank you for Good having me. Good to have me. you on the show. Thank you, thank you. You can call us on 070-8066814. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweets. Right, so UNDP obviously we know has, um, has supported quite a lot of countries in development. And I know that your focus this time around on 2020 is the creative industry. Could you tell us exactly what that's about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, we, we are really interested in working with the creative industry because the Nigerian creative industry is the most uplifting export that the continent has had for, for a long time. If you think about uh, how the, the music, uh, the, the film, uh, your artists, your fashion uh, designers have had impact in creating what I call the psychology of progress. Before you mm. progress, uh, uh, every child born in every part of this continent, but also in Nigeria, needs to feel that they come from a community and a society that Absolutely. can do great things. Mm. And I think the music and, the, and, and, the, and the, yeah, the entire creative industry has been one of those energizing aspects. So you can't think about development without thinking how uh, your mind is set up. Mm. Are, you, are you ready to take on, 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 on the world? And I think feeling that you belong to a society that can be so creative as, as the Nigerian mm. society is, mm. I think is one of the key elements of achieving development. I feel, I, 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 I feel very, very uh, passionate about anything that has to do with growth, you know, and I feel that what you don't see, you cannot become. Yeah. And most of the time, this artist, this movies depict something mm -hmm. that would make us aspire to be. And so, but what is the message that you, the UNDP is trying to push particularly? Because we have lots of movies coming out and I have an opinion on how those movies should, what those movies should say. Because I know that the, when Star Trek came out, there wasn't, people, there was not, there were not, we don't have cars that could run without, without um, fuel. And they depicted it. We didn't have um, mobile phones and they depicted talking across places that were not possible and because they depicted it those children watching did not know it didn't happen in yeah. real life they created it so yeah. i know that we can create things by just you showing see, it they're talking thank you because I, I have had my entire life is around what we just said because I've, I've actually had that pain for yeah. many years and i'm actually working on a major research project on this and when, when i when i heard that as your focus i was pretty excited because i was going to have a conversation with you because i feel and i'd like to hear your perspective on this yeah. that the kind of effect we got with Wakanda mm. is something exactly. we must be able to build on. Suddenly Wakanda came and suddenly Nigerians felt, the Africans felt, oh my yeah. goodness, we're power heroes. Mm -hmm. We got this, we got vibranium. <laughs> <laughs> Kids are thinking that, oh yeah, Wakanda forever. But what, what, what we fail to see, and, I, and a lot of people have fought me on this and I like to hear your thoughts on it. We keep sharing the stories we know. And I keep yeah. saying, don't do that. Yeah. We know Mr. Suraju will slap his wife, that is what we know. We know Mr. John would, uh, would uh, travel uh, abroad. Would, would travel abroad and we have, have, you know, the, the basic Nigerian story. Those are things we see every mm -hmm. single day. Sell a dream to the Nigerian child. Yeah. Sell a future to the Africans. Let them see something they've never seen before. Do you, do you agree with that? And do you think it's something we need to begin to change the storytelling of, of Nollywood or even all the, the, the creative industry in the whole of Africa? Or do you feel like we still must tell our stories? What we need to know where we're coming from to know where we're going. There's always that... That argument, I'd like to hear your views on this. No, I absolutely agree with you. Uh, you know, for society to aspire to what it wants to be, it has to see it through its creatives, mm. right? From the paintings, from the music. And for me, I think uh, the importance of the creative industry is that exact uh, instilling a self, uh, sense of confidence, a mm. sense of what is possible. Mm. Um, for country as diverse as Nigeria, that is so big with different uh, groups in different parts of the country. What is it that the stories that can be told through Nollywood that says that we need to come together, we need to work together as a nation, we need to uh, overcome our challenges. And for me, uh, as a development actor, uh, really, uh, it's, development is not only about good policies, it's not only about investment in resources, it's also a sense that we're in, in this boat called Nigeria together and how do we solve those problems. And it's through creatives you can imagine mm. how that can be done. 
cross and I, cultural marriages, exactly. cross so religious how does, marriages. Yeah. So UNDP, how does it plan on um, partnering with creatives? Is this, are you, we talking about um, funding movies? Are we talking about loans? What, mm -hmm. what is the plan? So, so this trip, I've been here a few days, I've been sitting with a lot of creatives, uh, hearing from them. Uh, one of the things they always tell me is we came here, we are where we are, without anybody helping us. Mm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and in that, there is a, there is a sense also, you know, mm. it's, it's a, maybe we, we, should, we should let them do what they do yeah. anyway, <laughs> um, because they've done so, so much. But also it's exactly the kind of, uh, how does the creative industry see itself as a soft power? Mm. soft power for development. And one of the things I'm really interested in is in how can we work with them to influence um, scripts. Okay. Uh, how can the scripts be a unifying, uplifting scripts mm. uh -huh. uh, without being too direct and too obvious because mm. if, if you yeah. do that, nobody's going to watch right. it. Right. Um, so this is the kind of things. We'll be, I'm also happy to listen to what they have to say in relation to the challenges they face. One of the things they told me is piracy. Yes. They feel that there is a lot of piracy that takes away uh, resources from them. There's also a sense that they, the, many people are not being paid uh, a living wage. Mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, so this is, this is the kind of challenges we're looking at. So, so is UNDP are, coming with content? Is it coming with training? Support. What, yeah. yeah, so we, we have a portfolio of support mm -hmm. that we normally provide to countries and, and uh, 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 such as the creative industries. Uh, issues around capacity, issue around facilitation, issue around connecting them to right to mm -hmm. the right people who can help. Uh, and then we, we're in 170 countries in the world. Mm -hmm. So we're able to cross fertilize. Mm -hmm. um, and we have partnership with many organizations across the globe. I like that, cross fertilize. Yeah. I like that word. Yeah. Can I take this call from Okonkwa? Are you there? Oh, sorry, lost that call. Nima, mm -hmm. go ahead, please. So uh, Miriam took the question out of my mouth. Let me quickly just disagree with Moria because I'm of the view that creatives should tell the real story mm -hmm. because the people in leadership are in isolation. They really do not understand or feel what we're going through. So again, my example is the terminal. So if someone were to do a story on how painful terrible. and terrible and what the, the, the damaging consequence of the oppression of those capitalists within residential area was, maybe the, the, these isolated leaders would feel the real impact of what the decisions are because they just license, get money, or we're bringing foreign investors and that's it. So do you think that creatives should just, you know, sell that dream alone without you know telling the story from the real the realities of the people wh where they live no no i think it's both because telling a story of uh, the reality because this country is so diverse you want to know what is real in borno <laughs> for somebody who is living in lagos mm. so it's through the stories and and the tales on and, and the resilience of people mm -hmm. uh, that you hear you you connect so it's, it's i mean you remember the story of chibuk Yes. Oh, yeah. uh, how it yes. brought the entire country together and said, well, we have to do something about this. Yeah. This is in our own country. Mm -hmm. uh, young, young girls have been kidnapped. But that is through the media, is through storytelling. I met a young man who just produced a, a, a documentary, won the Venice uh, Festival called uh, Daughters of Chibok. Okay. Uh, yes. It's unbelievable yes. the story he's able to tell and, and using 3D uh, to take you there without having to go no. there. Mm -hmm. so, yes. so you're right. I mean, I think... Uh, 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 there are many Nigerians in, in, in different places in this country that, that are doing an amazing job. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of stories of love uh, mm. across regions. There's yeah. a lot of stories of, of, of uh, coming out of nothing and becoming... I met a, a, a young man who's a musician here called Pato Rankin. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you hear his story of where he started mm -hmm. and where he is now, and he, he just started a scholarship across the continent to send young people uh, uh, to universities uh, yeah. and, and sponsor them. So the, and where he started, in a shanty town, mm -hmm. uh, some part of Lagos, he was mm -hmm. telling me, and now where he is. So there's a lot of stories. Let me take this call. Good morning, are you there? Oh, so oh. sorry. Please try calling the person back. We have to go on a break. When we come back, we'll take a few tweets, some more calls. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. Yes, you're talking about So, um, I, I want to talk about the two SDG goals that are very, very, um, mm. for me, of all of them, these two are very key. Um, it's the fact that we need education yeah. and we need to have healthcare. And I think everything would benefit from it. Education, ranking number one. And I would feel that UNDP would focus on how to 
promote our education, the, ed the quality of education that our children are getting, especially within the primary level. What, what are you, what are you, what is in your um, plan, agenda. Yeah. agenda for education, especially at the primary level? It's easy to pick a few, and mm -hmm. they, the UN, UNDP does that. They pick a few of the best of the best in the universities and they get exposure, but we need to groom from ground up. How are you interacting with the government? How are you interacting with the schools and the state governments to do this? So first, uh, I, I just want to, I know the SDGs are 17, so sometimes it's too long, people will be able to go through all of them. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's good to understand the SDG in, in terms of three pillars. Mm -hmm. You have the first pillar or set of SDG that focuses on people. Mm -hmm. What does the individual need? Education, mm -hmm. what, uh, what health, health. Uh, yeah. And then the second pillar is uh, the, the pillar around prosperity. Mm -hmm. What do we need to, uh, to have to grow the pie, to have the uh, larger economy? Mm -hmm. And what are the things that, that are around the prosperity? And the third pillar is about the planet. How do we live a better planet, a better Nigeria, a more uh, a Nigeria that is less polluted than the one we inherited? So those are the, the way I think that's the easiest way to understand yeah. the SDG. Mm -hmm. People, planet, and prosperity. Mm -hmm. UNDP... Uh, the education side is, is led by UNICEF, UNICEF. Number, UNICEF, especially primary education. And I know uh, my colleague uh, Peter, I'm sure he's watching, uh, they, they, they do an amazing job in supporting the, the, the Ministry of Education. I know they, they support uh, uh, um, uh, capacities and, and, uh, in the ministry, but also they support uh, many programs around the country. So I am not very familiar on the education side. From UNDP... I didn't want to take you up on that because I really wanted to go there. Because um, my issue with this support from international bodies is the inability to scale. They start well, but you just they, they do a fantastic initiative, and that's how it ends. And once they leave... We go back to start a school. Yeah. There isn't really, there's not enough support that actually takes us from level to level such that it's scalable and we can then see the, and which is supposed to be sustainable. <laughs> sustainable. So that's my worry, but I didn't want, because since you've already said that, you're not the one. I, I'm not that one, but I just, say, I just want yeah. to say, you, 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 I mean, um, the way the UN sees its work here, we are supportive of Nigeria and the government. Mm. We don't replace government. Mm. It's the job of government to provide right. those. So we are we are here to support. to support the, either through state government mm. or, and the the, um, uh, the federal government. And we really act essentially do. Nigeria has a plan for itself mm -hmm. uh, through your elected uh, officials, and we tend to work within yes. those within those. Okay. All those plans. I, I wanted to go to the issue of using working with creatives now and the issue of piracy. Mm -hmm. Because one of the um, SDG goals is no poverty and zero tolerance for corruption. I wanted to see what, you, what ways you were partnering with our government now to help these creatives get maximized best for whatever they Against turn Paris, yeah. and Yes, the intellectual property. First, uh, going back, I, I just wanted to mention one point. Um, uh, the debate around how do, uh, what is the role of the creatives in the development agenda? Yes. Uh, and what is the, the, the even, first they create jobs. So that is an important aspect. The, uh, Nollywood employs a lot of people. True. I think it's the second after agriculture in this country in mm -hmm. terms of, of, of the number of people employed by Nollywood. So they play an important part. Obviously they pay taxes that then we can use to build roads and hospitals and uh, other things. But the other part is that they feel that uh, uh, intellectual property is critical for their survival. Mm. You can't keep on investing and, and whatever you've invested, somebody takes away for free. So I think we're looking and talking and engaging with them on what can be done. And I think uh, better enforcement will help around, uh, around issues uh, on, on piracy. Um, but uh, as I said, for me, the last two, three days has been listening, hearing from all of you. You know much more than I do. <laughs> yeah. So sitting here also is more educational for me to know exactly what kind of support we can provide to them. So you've been, um, you've traveled some around Nigeria so mm -hmm. far, um, and you said you've been to the Northeast, and of course I'm yeah. sure you've seen how sad, you know, especially the North is because of the fight against the insurgency that we're facing, we're fighting. And I'm wondering, sometimes in the North, people seem to think that a lot of development, a lot of um, international help goes to like the Lagos area, the South South area. Maybe we get aid. There's always aid at the Northeast, you know. What other ways, apart from just providing them aid to take them from for survival mm -hmm. to developing? So when we, we have people who are not just just to link it to what she said. So we give you aid, you survive that period how do we how do we move you from just being to be sustainable to sustain you to develop you 
Yeah. How does UNDP come in this way? Especially, I don't know, do we have creatives now in the Northeast, <laughs> especially what we're going yeah. through? Yeah. Just <clears throat> uh, two things. I've worked in several African countries. This is one of the few countries I've been where aid plays zero in budget. So Nigeria is self-sufficient in its budget. So it's not, it's not a country that relies on foreign aid to, uh, fund. to fund its programs as a country, <clears throat> which is something that you should all be proud of so that you are you can, you know, you use your own resources. <coughs> That's a good thing, right? It's a very good thing. Uh, aid dependency uh, is not, is not, uh, is, is, uh, when is, I know countries that have 40, 50 percent of their budget that is aid what? dependent, yeah. which means then you're not really independent yeah. as a country to be able to uh, plan for your own future. So Nigeria is independent in, in terms of the kind of how it, uh, the resources and where it gets its resources. Uh, on the Northeast, <coughs> I've been to North several times. I'm going back again. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to say that I have never seen more resilient people. Uh, the kind of uh, conflict and uh, of the insurgents for the last 10 years, mm -hmm. it has hit uh, the communities uh, significantly. Uh, but the, the response now uh, with the, under the new governor, I, I don't know if you've engaged, you should bring him here. A very exciting governor Zulum, uh, um, Babagana Zulum, he of, of Bono, uh, he's active, he wants to change and what, what he tells me all the time is, I want to change a narrative of Bono. Mm. Fantastic. We'd like and to speak to him if you can connect us. But let me take this call from uh, Ikeja. Good morning, are you there? Yeah, good morning. Thanks for calling. Go ahead, please. Uh, I want to contribute to the program. Go ahead. That if, if for instance, there's no, we can always have 24 hours light as a sustainable development <laughs> program in Nigeria. <laughs> if only we can make sure that this national stealing, encouraging people to steal very well and calling it national cake to the detriment of the whole Nigerian society, to the female population, is what is causing this uh, stagnation, mm. poverty, because when we calculate for the past 16 years that President Obasanjo has provided money for 24 hours light, for instance, and we now. still do not have light, even though President uh, not oh, 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 we have to wrap up, but I think I get where she's coming from. Mm. I'd like to bring mm. out a question for what she just said. The issue, we can't go away from the issue of anti-corruption. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel that with your plans to help support the creative industry, the corruption drive the night that, we're, that the, our president has launched can actually support this? Or do you think it's, it's going to be inefficient? Because people are complaining that they're not seeing um, corruption being actually fought. So in your view with this plan for the UNDP, do you, do you believe that corruption in itself can actually be dealt with to help ensure that the creative industry thrives? Hmm. As Absolutely. Know. I mean, the, the Piracy is yeah. part of corruption. <laughs> yes. Definitely. Right? So you, um, but also I think it's really important that uh, we see corruption as a broader <coughs> challenge that will not be solved overnight. Because right. mm. it's also in value system, right? <coughs> right. If, if a policeman stops you and asks you for money, mm. uh, if, if somebody is uh, uh, selling uh, uh, things on the side of the street that without uh, permit, all those are part of co uh, 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 corruption. So how corruption is, is dealt with? critical for development because it takes resources away from key areas. And we at the UNDP, as, as part of our, governing, our governance portfolio, are very much involved in supporting government uh, to fight corruption. But I'm just, I just want to tell you, these things are not something that can be overnight. overnight. Yeah. Uh, all of us have to play an important role. Uh, mm. each, if every individual in, in our day-to-day -day behavior are able to re refuse in, to engage in corrupt actors, we also contribute to the anti-corruption. Unfortunately, we have to wrap up. Thank you so much. Thank we, you. we thank you that um, you've come on our show to share the support your organization is doing for our country. We'll continue to monitor and see how far you've come and how far, and we'll try to bring you back again. whenever you're back in Nigeria. Yeah. Let okay. us see how far you've come, yeah. especially with the creative industry. Absolutely. Hold Something. me accountable, I say. Oh, I'm back. <laughs> thank you very much. That's thank all you. we can take on thank today's show. Hope you learned a few things as we did. Have a fabulous day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.